Hey everybody, Alex from seemsgoodmagic.com here, back doing a best of three Dominaria United draft. What is what does this do? Seven mana. Look at the top seven. Reveal a non-saga permanent card from among them. Put it into your hand. Put the rest in the bottom of your library in any order. So you get two cards, and then put up to two non-saga permanents graveyard permanent cards from your hand onto the battlefield. This doesn't seem that good to me for seven mana. Basically get well, I mean, look at the top seven twice. So you get a likely you're gonna get a good playable card for two turns. Seven mana is so much though. And I'm probably not gonna need three that much. You can read ahead to three, so I can put two things out. I'm still paying seven mana to put two things out. I don't know. I'm probably looking at like Citizen's Arrest. There's also Terra Sunder, which is instant speed, but two colors to exile any non land permanent. This only deals with creatures and planeswalkers and it can be targeted but it is mono color so to me it's a little bit better all right what do we got here card's kind of cool for two mana two mana three two trample alone is kind of good dragon whelps very good nahal or najal however you pronounce it good griffin protector vanguard to stay on color but probably just extinguish the light i'm okay with Instant speed removal, upside if you kill something little, but can deal with anything. I think that's pretty good. Monocolor. Choking Miasma. This one is a little bit tougher to go off with. If you can set it up properly, it's pretty awesome. Could take Queen All in Null. I haven't played with her yet. But I like the card in theory. Need some token creators to really take advantage of it. This card's good. Defender and you get a land. Both relevant. Mesa Cavalier is kind of a unexciting flyer. So really it's like board wipe versus... Queen all in all. I think I'm going to take the legend. I, I feel like this is a this is definitely a build around though. We're going to have to pick up token things if we want it to be really, really good. Well, Vanguard wants to be in the same deck. Oh, Strength of the Coalition is a cool card. This also wants to be in that deck. And Rulik Mons. This is cool. This synergizes quite nicely with Queen All and all, but now we're starting to get pretty pretty color intensive. But that is good. You get a 1-1 one, one Goblin and a 1-1 one, one Soldier and buff Queen All and all by two. Kind of tempted to take this. It's on color with Queen All and all and definitely wants to be in the same deck. It's a combat trick that also can just buff your whole team. Let's, let's take that, I think. Bite Down is good, too. Artillery Bass is play Blast is playable, and like I said, the Vanguard wants to be in this deck. But I'm gonna—I think this card's really good. Instant speed buff, no less too. All right, Domain uh, dude that gets big. Here's a little token maker, but five mana for a ramp plus two soldiers, not the best. Protector's pretty good. Evasive, it definitely wants to be in the token deck. Or we just take Artillery Blast, but leaning more towards two color than a domain deck. So really this is like, well, it's two mana, three damage to a tap creature. That's not amazing, but it's not terrible either. I think I'm just going to take that Protector. Get the Flyer. All right, another Citizen's Arrest. This Bulwark is just a good card. One mana, zero, three, Defender, but then you can pay two and make it a three, three. Not really a three, three, Defender, but deals three damage. This wants to be in this deck too, but we probably take the Citizen's Arrest. Another just solid removal. Phalanx is good though, especially when you got a bunch of tokens, which we don't have yet, but hopefully we can find somewhere along the way. So... Take up the shield. Is a playable combat trick. 
You permanently buff something, and lifelink and indestructible is a nice little ability set. It might could take sacred peaks though. It'll help if we find more domain along the way. It also lets us randomly splash for red. I think that is slightly higher upside than take up the shield to me. So I can make a thopter and tap artifacts I don't have and then not do much with them. All right. Can take the root weaver. Yeah, I mean, it makes sense. If we are continuing down green white, especially, I don't see why not. Herbalist. Never get to play this card. Bone Splinter is actually very good with, with token build. Then it's like one mana removal, but I'm going to take the Herbalist. Like I said, I never take it. I kind of like it. Scout the Wilderness is still a little bit more expensive than I like. All right. Vanguard. Well, Protector's got to be better, though. Guy's Might actually is... No, no. Never mind. I thought this is the one that's number of creatures you control. That's not in this set. Guy's Might is good if you're a domain deck. If you're not, not so much. I still feel like it's Protector over Vanguard. Vanguard technically, once again, go to tokens, but so is Protector. And Protector flies. All right, take the Cavalier, get another Flyer. All right, well, Artillery Blast, third to last, is good. It's a playable card. Much better when you have Flyers like we do, the Cavaliers and the Protectors. All right, got Scout the Wilderness. Can play it if, in a pinch if I really need to, but hoping I don't need it. I guess he could play Drawbridge. All right. Best pick here. Hmm. Well, this makes tokens, and we already have the red, so I suppose this makes sense. It's base power greater than its base power. So we still need to buff something. I mean, is this one's base power? I think this just instantly combos with Queen all in all because this doesn't, this base power is star, which I guess is zero. I don't know exactly how that works, but I'm going to 50-50 shot guess that it, uh, it does work synergistically with Queen all in all. Regardless, we have permanent buff effects too. We've got that Root Weaver. We might wheel another one. So Baird looks very very much what this deck wants to do. Oh, this one's a cool one. Double red, though. Probably want the Cavalier. Get the Token Maker. Yeah, I mean, this is exactly what we want. And this is just a great card for any any white deck, but... Particularly this one. Maybe we'll get that Keldon Strike Rider back or whatever too. All right, so more tokens versus Phalanx. Um, really like that Phalanx a lot. But Captain's Call is pretty cool too. We do have quite a few cheap creatures though. I could see the Phalanx being better. The Vigilance is huge. It's definitely between these three, but I'm leaning towards, kind of leaning towards Phalanx. I could see taking the Captain's Call though. Cause we have a bunch of like, you know, group buff stuff. I'm gonna take the Phalanx. I don't know why I'm just, I'm more attracted to it than the Captain's Call. For some reason, I really like that card. All right, Stalker. Could take Smash to Dust for sideboard if we're already splashing red. I guess that makes sense because I don't really need... Well, I guess this works with tokens too. I doubt it makes the deck, but... All right. Well, Outrider is kind of cool. Dragon Whelp is probably the best card, but we're... I don't know. Double red splash is... Not preferred. Could take Crystal Grotto. We're not actually a domain deck, so this is reasonable fixing for our deck. I could see that, actually, over another Herbalist. Magna Goth Sentry is very good, though. 
Yeah, I think we take the reach, dude. How many four drops do we have already? Well, we're probably not doing that, so... We just have, like, two. Yeah. The sentry's very good. Could take Runic Shot. Broken Wings, more of a sideboard card. Scout the Wilderness we already have, and I'm not that excited by it. Broken Wings I'm okay with taking. Actually, one mana destroy a tap creature is still pretty good, too. It's tough to go wrong with that. Because we can go wide with this deck, too. We just make a bunch of tokens with Baird and just build up. And then you just go wide with, like, Heroic, whatever it's called, or the Frenzy. Sleeper. I never really play the Berserker. Don't have the fixing for Sleeper, but maybe we could find it. Because, I mean, this effect is going to be the best with a bunch of tokens, I think. And at worst, it's a 2-mana 3-1, which is still pretty good. Sacred Peaks versus Captain's Call. Well, Captain's Call is kind of exactly what this deck wants to do, so I think we'll take that. All right, we got the Root Weaver back. That's good. We'll take it. All right, got the Peaks. Could take the Strike Team, too. Making the tokens is nice. But I think I'm going to take the Fixing. All right, got a Protector. Ooh, could take the Vine Wall. Because what, we already have, now we have three four drops? Four four drops already? I'll take another Protector. That's probably the last one I need, though. And yeah, Protector does really go off with Captain's Call, doesn't it? I mean, Captain's Call also just turns on the Phalanx, so that's nice. Don't really need any of this. It doesn't matter. We'll cut the red card. I don't think we're going to need the drawbridge, but... I don't know. I don't think we're going to need Scout the Wilderness, even though it makes tokens. Just because I feel like it's... Expensive. Yeah, don't need Miria. Don't really need a kind of class, but I could take it. It's still a very good beater, especially with buff. Or I could take Radiant Grove, or I could take Lightning Strike. These are all good options. We have plenty of creatures. I'd have to splash Lightning Strike, but we have two Sacred Peaks already. A kind of class is cool just because it's a cheap beater, but we kind of have a lot of two drops already. I could see taking Lightning Strike. You can also kill your opponent with it. Fires of Victory, we're not going to be able to splash, I don't think. So, Lightning Strike. Just sufficiently costed burn, since we're probably going to have enough creatures. We really have 15 already, if you include the Captain's Call. Alright, how many soldiers do we have? I think we have a decent amount. Yeah, three plus, I think, Captain's Call makes soldiers. Yeah, this is like just what the Doctor ordered. Missionary is a great card. Uh, Bite Down we would take. And Badger is pretty cool too, but we can't kick these, so they're a little bit worse. Regardless, I'll take the Veteran. It's like great, great card for us. This card's cool. Tough to splash for us, though. The Worm is good. I might just take the Grove since we're already... We already basically have a deck, so now fixing is just going to make red easier to splash. This is good, though. Just... Oh, this is a cool card. We just don't have enough... We don't have any black permanents for it, but that is a good card. Ooh, King Darien. Nice. This is, like, just what the Doctor ordered. So, we're, we have both King Darien and we have... Uh, wow. This deck just got Omega upgraded here. Wow. Really, really good. And this is a soldier, too. So, I mean, soldiers have way more value now, too. We don't have the goblins for this, so I guess we don't need that. But the sleeper is huge pickup now because we have... I mean, it's a two-drop, three-power soldier. That's cool, actually, with all the tokens. That's pretty awesome. 
I could see taking that actually. Because we're going to have three land types, so all of our little 1-1s one and 2-2s two just get huge. This is like, uh, this is huge. I'm going to take it. This like buffs our whole team. So another Sentry. It's another 4-drop, but this card is just good. Reach is huge. Especially when we're trying to go wide. Alright, another 4-drop, but I'm okay with it. Um, probably just take another flyer, we have enough two drops as it is. Uh, Steel Crusher is at least a good sideboard card. Well, we already have, uh, I guess we don't, for blowing up artifacts. We're already making cuts, I doubt we need a Cavalier, I'll just leave it in there. Another Scout the Wilderness, I don't think we're playing the first one. I could see the Bulwark, ah... Uh, Neither one probably makes the deck, honestly. Not a soldier. The goblin is the best card, I guess, but... On the splash, probably not. Optimum. Hexbane Tortors. Last pick playable? Wow. This deck's cool. Alright. Hmm. Well, we can cut a boatload of creatures. So as cute as Stalker is with like Captain's Call and stuff, seven four drops is a lot. I doubt we're going to play seven four drops. Could cut maybe one Protector. Just have a nice little 2-2-2 two, two, two split. Let's cut Scout the Wilderness. I think we're cutting Stalker. These are Druids, but the ability is is just what Baird needs. So maybe we'll cut the Herbalist once again. Don't get to play it. Just because I feel like the Sleepers are likely better because they're soldiers. So then it actually makes our Valiant Veteran stronger. They become four, two mana four twos. Unfortunately, I'm not going to play black mana, so we're not going to be able to splash that ability, which is just excellent for our deck. But, got to do what you got to do. I mean, I how many soldiers did I end up with? Six? It's pretty good. Hmm. Still have to make three more cuts. This is also a soldier. Nice. See, maybe cutting the Cavaliers. Just keep our two drops high. We only have four red sources. Is that enough? Hopefully. We only have two red spells, so it's not that many. Since we're looking like beatdown, stuff like Artillery Blast and Runic Shot do look worse. But we also have the late game advantage of like... Zaro, Jainin... With like going wide with like, you know, tokens and then Strength of the Coalition buffing them all. Zaro, Jainin buffing them all. King Darien. So we actually have a good late game advantage there. Maybe we'll cut one sleeper. Let's cut maybe one cavalier. We can still cut another creature and be just fine. Maybe we'll cut the cavaliers. I kind of like them, but could cut the sleeper too it does significantly drop our soldier count down to six if you include the captain's calls i don't think six four drops is too many necessarily because 
we don't have that much other late game. Hmm. All right. Maybe I'll cut the sleepers since I can't splash them anyway. It's a cool deck. So we have six, eight, nine white, six, seven green, four red. Do we have more white than... Yeah, we do. So this is probably fine. We actually don't have that much green. Surprisingly. We're like almost... Just mostly white. All right. Well, I think I'm okay with this mana base, so... All right, we'll run it like this. We'll see you around one. All right, we'll play first. Yeah, looks good. Real good. We get to do Baird into King Darien, and then we actually just get to spit out one, one, two, two soldiers each turn. Wow, these two are ridiculous together. Because your base power immediately goes up because of this. And artillery blast already deals three damage too. That's nice. Oh wait, we can't we can't cast Baird because I don't have the red and the white. Oh, or I just luck sack into exactly what I need. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I think we'll do the root weaver first and then King Darian. Could do just another root weaver too, make King Darian less of a uh, less of a target. Or I could do the Captain's Call. Best use of mana is Captain's Call, but it still wouldn't let me. Hmm. I think we'll just attack, and then I'll do Captain's Call. So, I think we'll do King Darien. Actually, hmm. Got some options here. So, if I do King Darien, let's say I attack with team, they block. A 2-2, two, two, they take 4, 6, 8 damage. They go to 9. They probably don't attack the next turn. Or I can Artillery Blast the... I think I'm just going to attack with these three. All right, so this way I can kill both their dudes. And they have one card left in hand. I kind of like that. Do we just want to do the Root Weaver now, or do I want the full value? They're at seven. I think we just play the Root Weaver. All right. 
Wow. Uh, are they dead? They blocked my biggest guy. Yeah. I don't need to show them the Valiant Veteran. Alright. So they had to mull that game. And they're doing like a... Just like a Jund value deck. It's cool. They have some good stuff in there. I mean, sideboard options are just like more flyers, less early game, but I don't think we need to do that. I think we'll stick to the same plan here. It worked well. Synergistically, the deck is pretty tight, so let's keep it going. All right, it's a little bit on the slow side, but we'll keep it. Interestingly, they want us to play first. Maybe that's a thing in this format. I've been out of it too long and don't even realize. Hmm. All right. Hmm. Ooh. Captain's Call with Valiant Veteran follow-up. That's pretty slick. And we even have the three white, so we can do both of these. It's pretty good. I think I'm just going to get rid of Balmor. Wow. All right. Let's see for round two. All right. Round two, we'll play first. Keep it. Need help, but I mean, it's a good hand. If with any land, even a tap land, I would take. All right. I think we'll just drop the Root Weaver because I don't want to get mana starved and too far behind. And King Darien, technically better later when you can start buffing it and spitting out soldiers. Mm. It's kind of interesting. All right. We'll do another one. Who are they going to target? Themselves. Interesting. All right. Very interesting. I mean, I guess it kind of makes sense. You want to be able to cast instants and sorceries from your graveyard, so... All right, got the land, so that's certainly good enough. Joint exploration again. Sure. mana. I think we'll do the sentry. I could have maybe done the griffin protector there instead. I guess I just thought the sentry was bigger so it looks better, but maybe flyer would have been better. I'm not sure. They just have a bunch of three twos. So that's not super intimidating. Alright. So I could do King Darien now. Pretty tempted to just do the captain's call and follow up with uh, the Darien. Or I could do the Griffin Protector and follow up with the Captain's Call, but... Huh. 
They're both, maybe the four drops, ultimately smarter. I don't think we're doing King Darien yet. We're going to do a four drop, especially since we're mana starved. So I think we'll get in there. I'm going to see if they're ready to block yet. They're at six. So Captain's Call puts less eggs into one basket for King Darien. Because then we'll have quite a bit of lethal damage there. This might be the smartest then. Because if they pay like a if they play like a huge blocker and I follow up with King Darien, they, this alone is gonna be lethal. So Maybe we'll do that. Heroic charge, yeah. We didn't get any of those. All right. All right, well, that'll do for now. So now they're in lightning strike range as well. So, best use of mana is the Protector. Cavalry probably offers the most... Wait. Oh, these are all untapped? Then they just die. I forgot they untapped. Wait, why did they untap? <laughs> Didn't they get stun counters on them? Oh, it wasn't kicked. I see. Very odd deck. Very, very odd looking deck from our opponent. We've got, I mean, all sorts of colors. They do have kicker. None of the cards in themselves are bad, but synergistically a little bit odd. Like why is the hammer hand in there? So a little bit strange. I don't quite know what's going on. Maybe they've got something huge in there they're digging for. I don't know. But as far as sideboard goes, once again, we're kind of exactly where we want to be. All the token synergy cards, soldier value. Yeah, I mean, we got it. We got what we want here out of this deck. Let's keep possible maybe Caval Cavalier into Protector into King Darien or these three into... I mean, like I said, King Darien's one of those cards you kind of want to play late, as late as you can. Because you don't want to attack with it and you don't want it to get killed by removal. So you want it to be a thing that causes a lot of problems in the late game, the mid to late game. All right, so we'll go... Cavalier either into Sentry or Protector. I mean, the earlier you get Protector down, probably the most value you get out of it. So now we could go Cavalier into Sentry into Phalanx. That's pretty good. Or we can do the Cavalier into Protector. Yeah, I don't know what I like the most yet. I got to think about that. Protector needs two creatures to get up to sentry power toughness. So maybe Protector isn't as good, but Protector also flies 
And we do have token stuff in here. I guess it depends on what they do here. All right, Cavalier. To be honest, I kind of don't want to trade, but I'm gonna offer it anyway. And the reason I don't want to trade is because I have Phalanx, but it's all right. All right, good. I don't want to trade either. So I'll do the sentry now because it's got reach so it can block the cavalier. And then we can pay, play the phalanx. Could just slam the phalanx and then I feel less worried about attacking with uh, the cavalier. Alright, I think we'll do Phalanx before one of my guys dies and then attack with both. Because they don't really have great blocks here anyway. So, ooh, all right, we'll attack with both, and then we'll do the captain's call. Actually, I, this is that same dilemma where I could do griffin protector or captain's call. Think captain's call. Only one white mana and a boatload of white spells in hand, so got to come up with a good plan for that. Oh, well. Ask and ye shall receive. Uh, so we can do King Darien now. And they would take seven. They'd take six. I guess we'll go for it. Let's see if they have the counter. Can always sack this if they can kill it, I guess. Make my dudes indestructible. All right. Mm, double citizens arrest so we can even deal with big fat fatties. All right. We'll see for round three. All right. Round three. Play first. One lander. No, nope, better mull that. Ooh, well, we'll keep this. We'll pitch a forest. Be a little bit slow, but Captain's calling a Zaro Jane and alone is pretty good. So we want to start with the Sacred Peaks. That would let us follow up with a Baird off the top. And we're going to have three for Zaro Jainan, which is quite nice. Technically, you can buff the captain's call tokens twice if we get two attacks in. All right, I'll just do the Radiant Grove, just get the tap land. Prevents me from casting Lightning Strike now, but that's all right. Hey, good draw there. I guess we do have three of them, but still, good draw. I guess we don't have the fifth land yet. Mm. Good draw. Yeah. 
you actually want to do the Zaro Janin first, and then you play Captain's Call and attack with Zaro Janin and just go off. All right, so best use of mana is Captain's Call. So we'll probably just do that. Also spreads out the targets more. So, yeah, now we do this. Swing team. They can block the Root Weaver with the Monstrosity. I think we just do this. So they block Root Weaver, Monstrosity, or they'd rather trade. I mean... I mean, either way, we've got him in lightning strike range now, so. So swing team. I'll see how they block. So another kind of odd looking deck here, like they have Relic of Legends, which I guess is fine, it fixes, but all we saw was Shouldred's Restoration, so they paid seven mana to gain five and res a five five, I mean that's not bad, and then the Sky Knight, but no help for that. I mean, we just didn't get that much information, so let's run it back. All right, this one is a mulligan. We'll keep that. I think we'll dump probably, I guess, a forest again. Actually, we don't need two red, so... Actually, in case of Baird, because we don't have any double green in here. Let me make sure of that. Yeah, so we'll dump a forest, actually, oddly. But I think ultimately it does make sense because we want to be able to use Peaks for White. We want to be able to draw Baird and do something with it. Be able to play it right away. All right, so I'm going to slam the uh, veteran. Set up for a good captain's call at some point. Try and go wide. So we can do Captain's Call next turn. I might as well bluff. That way they maybe attack with Lagomos and I get like a runic shot off too. Okay. 
So then I can do captain's call into strength of the coalition. That's not bad. I guess I'll just do captain's call and pass here. I want to draw another land, but I guess I need my white for the strength of the coalition, so hmm. this pumps for currently white, black, red, green, so four? That's pretty big. All right, we'll take five. All right. So they can buff the thing for four. So they would deal three, seven, potentially eight to us. Hmm. I guess I just smashed team. Because I don't think they have lethal on backswing, do they? Three, five, six, ten, eleven. I guess they have Exaxi's lethal, huh? All right, I'll just leave one token back then. So I could deal six. And then runic shot. Legomos does not make the best use of mana. But if they have removal for our 2-2, two -two, we do die. Because it's 3 plus 4, 7, 7, 8, 10. So I kind of need to kill something. So I think I'm just going to deal 6 here. So maybe we'll kill the Sky Knight. I think we were just a little bit shy of lethal there. All right, five, eight, ten. So I think we'll take ten. We have lethal here, but another round of this for now is good. If I attack with everything and they block my two biggest dudes, whatever they are, I can deal an additional three. So let's say two dudes get through. That's four, five, six, seven, eight, not lethal. So we'll do captain's call.
Strange. Oh yeah, enlist with Radha is great. I forgot about that. No wonder I thought Radha was mediocre. Totally forgot about how good it is with enlist. I'm surprised I haven't seen that before. All right, so they have three blockers, uh, which means we can only get in with two creatures, which means we don't have lethal. So we have to hang back and set up for strength of the coalition here. That's the best we've got. Um, and they do have lethal if they attack with everything, because we only have five creatures. All right. Unfortunately, they got us here. No removal. And uh, I don't have enough blockers, and I'm at one life. So strength the coalition, but we still take one and die. All right. Uh, still like our deck. Still feel like we're probably favored. All right. Mm, I don't like six landers. That's too much. This will have to do. Then we'll dump. Uh, yeah, what will we dump? We don't have green for strength of the coalition, so I could dump our. I mean, strength of the coalition is one of our stronger cards. I don't want to get rid of a land, I don't think, though. It's one of our spells. And it's probably Artillery Blast or Strength of the Coalition. I guess Strength of the Coalition. I don't. To be honest, I don't really want to get rid of that because it's so strong, like I said. But I'm kind of worried. Like, if we don't draw lands, I need a little protection. I don't actually know. I guess that's the right choice because we don't have any green mana, too. We don't really have the creatures yet to even support it, so... Not by the bluff.
So if we draw land, Zaro Jainan makes the best use of mana. If we don't draw land, we'll do, I guess, Sentry, probably. Yeah, that makes sense. Although, Protector into Sentry won't die to a Snare Spinner block. Does have that going for it. Alright, we'll do Sentry first. So Artillery Blast deals four damage right now. It's pretty good. I definitely want to get Zaro Janin out as soon as possible, just because at that point, any top deck uh, captain's call is just like immediate huge buff. All right, we got the land, so we're going to do the Zaro Janin. I'll still attack with the sentry here, see what happens. So now King Darien actually makes it so my Valiant Veteran doesn't get buffed from Zaro Janin, so I guess I want to get the buff first. Unfortunately, Griffin Protector also does not get buffed from Zaro Janin. That's pretty good. Let's see where they start, though. Are they going to just get a dragon right away? Or are they going to... I mean, deal two damage each creature doesn't make a ton of sense, I don't think. It kills our Valiant Veteran, but... I don't know. I feel like... All right. They start on number two, interestingly. Getting rid of a Loam Speaker. Wow. Why do they have so many Relic of Legends? All right. So we're actually going to do the attack first to buff our Valiant Veteran. And then we'll play a Griffin Protector. And set up for King Darien, I think. Ah, there's what we wanted. So, we're definitely doing this first. This is huge. Absolutely huge. Mm, could I have attacked with the veteran too? Let's see, they blocked there. No, I didn't have to, so that's fine.
All right. Ended up going 3-0. Deck really came together, I feel like, in pack three, ultimately. Just getting a random, like, King Darien and just hugely synergistic token dudes. The funny thing is I picked up the queen in pack one and never played her once. And we played Baird once and it died right away. So the whole draft was basically dictated by uh, King Darien and... Uh, Whatever our other value legend was. Alright, Peacekeeper. Oh, that's a cool card. 3-3 three, three Vigilance, too? I feel like it's an easy Peacekeeper here. That's a nice card. You get to see their hand, too. It's a great card. Uh, Lightning Strike, obviously good, too, but I'd rather have the Peacekeeper. Cyclops is great. Love that card. That would have been a... Double Red would have been tough, but... Very good for with token decks, too. Sky Knight is good. I take the pace, the peacekeeper. Looking at your opponent's hand is huge. Uh, Archangel of Rats, a phenomenally powerful card, so easy pick up there. I played against Legomos a lot and haven't played with it once, so I'd like to play with it sometime. It's cool with like bone splinters and sack value stuff. Easy Archangel of Wrath. Enchantment creatures you control have Death Touch, Life Link, and Hexproof. And then this turns your non aura enchantments into creatures in addition to their other types. Pretty gosh darn build around. So I don't know if I love that. But on the other hand, this pack really doesn't have anything too sexy in it otherwise. Berserker. Maybe for hardcore beatdown. This is just so hard to build around I feel like I'd probably just do the berserker and be okay with it rather than take a three color build around card all right well I know Skyrider's great this is a five mana five five buff all your legends where x number of legendary creatures you control and then when you cast from your hand exile from the top of your library into the exile and a legendary non-land card with lesser mana value you can cast that without paying its mana cost that's a cool card Probably still just take the Skyrider, though. This card is so good. And then I don't have to play five-color domain. Jota Unifier looks like a more fun card, though. Defiler of Vigor. Great card. Five mana, six, six, Trampler with huge upside. Yeah, really good. I would take that. Cutdown's good, too. Love the Phalanx. LSO Core is good, Arrest is good, Worm's good, Stray, but this, this, all of these cards are very good. It just so happens the rare is the best. Soul Windgrace, I played against this and lost to it once. It's a phenomenally powerful card. I would, I would definitely take this, even though it's three color. Just so much value to reap out of that. Let's you turn your flood into value and then you still get to play your lands from your graveyard. So it's really nice. Urtai Resurrected. Really impressed with this card. You can counter spells or destroy <laughs> creatures or planeswalkers. They get to draw, I guess, either way, but you get a 3-2 out of it, too. It's a great card. I wouldn't be surprised if that saw some constructed play, but I know nothing about constructed, so that doesn't help. All right, Leyline Binding, cost one less to cast for each basic land type among lands you control and when it enters, exile a non-land permanent. All right, yeah, nothing too fancy, especially on a rare. I could see this being an uncommon. It's kind of weird that it's a rare, especially in a set that already has like a Ixalan's Binding or whatever, right? The Or the four mana, whatever it's called. The four mana version that's also Flash Enchantment. It's a lot of this effect in white in this format. But I guess I'd take the Leyline Binding. Silly me not even thinking about how good Radha is with uh, Enlist. But, boy, is it sure good with Enlist. All right. Well, that's it, folks. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, thanks for tuning in. We'll see you for the next one.